Hello again, and welcome to Instant Strumming with Ample Sound Acoustic Guitars. I'm in a blank Cubase file, so we're going to start from scratch. And the first thing we need to do is start a new project. And I've already got my defaults set up. You'll notice that a new project doesn't give us any tracks, so we need to press F11. And this gives us the VST Instruments list. And in here, I'm going to choose AGT, that's the Ample Guitar Tailor. And it asks me if I want to create a MIDI track associated with this plugin, and yes, we do. So all that's taken care of, and the um, interface is displayed. The first thing we need to do is enter an offset value in the track delay parameter of the output audio. Now, if you're using Cubase and Nuendo, this is track delay. In Logic and Studio One, it's called delay. In Pro Tools, you have to use track start. And in Sonar, it's the time plus parameter. So we're going to just put in minus 50 here. And then I want to reduce the volume a little bit. Let's see, audio fader audio fader. I'm going to take it to minus 15 so that it isn't too loud. And the next thing I want to do for this particular demo is change the tempo. So I'm going to get this little window up here. And you can see the current tempo is 120. And by taking this line down, I can take it to, I want 95 for this particular demo. And you can see it changed there. Right. Now we can look at the interface, and the first thing we want to do is change to the strummer display. Now it only changes the display. The strummer is not yet turned on. When you toggle this switch on, the strummer is enabled. And once it's enabled, and as long as this switch is on, you can change to any of these other displays up at the top. So we're choosing strummer. We've turned it on. And we need to choose strum here so that we get the best samples for this particular demo. And down at the bottom, I just want to mention these two important modes. In detect mode, when this is lit, the software will detect what a keyboard player is pressing on his MIDI keyboard. So that's probably the, ref the preferred mode for keyboard players. We need select mode because we're going to select from chords stored in one of these 12 slots. And the first thing we need to do is define some chords. You do that by choosing the chord name. I'm going to go with A major in the first position. There are three different positions you can choose. There it is at the fifth fret. And there it is in the first position. The next chord I want is E. And I want major. There are a lot of useful types here. And you can produce I think over 2,160 different permutations of all these chords and the inversions. Uh, so there's plenty to choose from here, and you can even use a, a user, your own user defined. So I want the E in the first position. I want the D to be an F sharp minor. So I'm going to choose that. And then finally, here, I want a D and I want that major. So that's a, just a, a cute little progression for this demo. Uh, and you can see the chord whenever you click the button. You can see what it is you're going to get. Now we need a strum pattern. And the strum patterns are displayed over here. And they are stored in sequences. And you click these buttons to bring up the new strum pattern display. And also, you can see a tooltip. In this particular case, C sharp 3 is the key I'm going to press to trigger this particular strum pattern. So let's go with that. Now as long as I hold that key down, the pattern will continue to strum and nothing new will change. Uh, nothing else will happen. So we need a way to change the chords. This one's going to trigger the strum continuously and then we're going to change the chords like this. This is the continuous strumming key. And then we're going to press one of these 12 keys. And since we're only using the first four slots, we're going to press one. Then the second key in the range will give us 
the second stored chord. Third key in the range will give us the third stored chord. So all the time we're holding this down, we're going to trigger new chords by pressing one of these keys in this range. So I'm just going to do that in real time, and I'm going to change to the main display so that you can see my key presses. There's the range shown in blue, and we're going to use this key, this one, this one, and this one. So here I go. I'm going to just record that in real time. Just go round one time, and you can see my key presses. Cool. So, next up is recording something. I'm not going to put a metronome in here, but you would, you would need a metronome or some drums to play accurately. And you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to hold down the key that triggers the strumming and then change the chords with one of the keys in the trigger range. I'm going to do that live. And here we go. Right, that's what it looks like. Here is the continuous strum, shown as a straight line, and these are the brief key presses I used to change the chords, and it looks like this in the piano roll. So there's our C-sharp 3, and here are the key presses. Down here you can see the velocity, and you can change it simply by dragging up and down, and the velocity is shown in Cubase, it's just shown right under here when I'm in this pane. That's pretty much all there is to that. Um, I'm going to switch to another file right now. I'm going to close this one. I don't need to save it, and I'm going to open instant strumming that I've already prepared. Now here's what the data looks like when I fixed it. You'll notice that the key press that triggers the chord comes just before the measure boundary. You can do it at the same time. Theoretically, it's possible, but each um, host software processes notes in a different way. So it's probably a good idea just to have it tied ahead of the, of the measure boundary to give it time to land the chord properly on, on time. And this is what it looks like in the piano roll. So there's our C sharp 3 again. This is exactly the same as what we were just looking at. So you're probably wondering how you're going to do that when you don't have a MIDI keyboard. Well, what you do is you record the C sharp 3 continuously first, and then in a second pass, you can press the keys while recording on the same track. So, this is what that would look like. You would just record uh, a continuous C sharp 3 for the whole eight measures. There it is. And then in a second pass, you go. Um, into this track, this is the one, and record the key presses as you go in real time on a, 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 in a second pass. So that's how you would record without a MIDI keyboard, just uh, do two operations. Now what I have here is a little bit of uh, bass, I have a solo and uh, some drums down here. I'm going to call up the interface and show you what this sounds like with the toggling off. This is doubling. I'm going to talk about that in a second. This is using the uh, pretty cool stereo mode. There are two stereo modes and two mono. This one's more or less centered. Let's see what that sounds like with everything in. I'm going to mute this track even though there's nothing on it. Well, that little solo here is kind of getting in the way of the strumming because the strumming is in the center. So what we can do is go back to the interface and turn the doubling on. Now, once the doubling is on, you get completely different samples on the left, panned wide, and completely different samples on the right. This is not a delay. So this is a very convincing impersonation of two guitarists uh, playing together. And you can control the uh, width right here, 
So there's a lot you can do, and we're still in this stereo mode, but now we have two guitarists playing. Let's see what that sounds like. And with that, I'm going to leave you on behalf of Ample Sound. Thanks for listening. <laughs>